So Nick is planning to write a report on the music preferences of the students' at college. There's a lot of them. Why would he want to use a sample rather than essentially a census? Well, I wrote for this reason to save time. Mark scheme just quoted that the population was large. I mean, we've been told that, but like, what? So why would we not want to do it? I think we're like talking about time or expense. He's not really spending money on it in this case, so I think time is is the key one. So that's that's what I think is the, the best answer. And B, Amaya suggests that Zach should use a sample that's stratified. What is the advantage over this as opposed to random sampling? So random sampling, everyone has the same chance of being picked. You could get every single possible kind of arrangement of, of people in your sample. Um, you could, but that's actually somewhat of a disadvantage, to be honest, because you could, there is a chance you could just pick the youngest year group, for example, and not represent the whole group. So basically, uh, stratified will ensure correct proportions. We still have an element of randomness, but we ensure that we get the right number of students in each year, for example. So yeah, the mark scheme says include students from all years. We'll guarantee this. Numbers in the correct proportions, or that different years might like different music. Zach decides to take a random sample of 60 students. He asks each student how many hours per week on average they spend listening to music during the term. And then he calculates some statistics as shown. Sundip tells Zach that during term time, she spends on average 30 hours per week listening to music. Should this be considered an outlier? This is a really interesting question, actually, slightly different to the, to the norm. So outliers, there's actually two definitions we use in A-level math for the outlier. And the first is the, um, actually, I'm going to go with the standard deviation. So if we are more than um, two standard deviations away from the mean, then it's often, well, it's considered to be an outlier. So it will be 21 plus or minus 2 times 4.2. So this is actually the outlier boundary. And it's going to equal 21 plus 8.4, which gives 29.4. We could work out the lower one as well. It's not going to be important here. I'll just work, work it out, 12.6. Okay, so that's the cutoff. So um, Sundip, who is it? Sorry, Sundip. Sundip's value of 30 is just beyond this, but only just. Technically, it would be an outlier. But there's another way to define outliers, and that is to use the interquartile range. So mu plus or minus two standard deviations is one of them. The other one is the, sorry, it's not the median, it's the um, upper quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range or the lower quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Now, I'm going to ignore that one here because we're clearly looking at one that's above the median. So it's going to be 22.9 plus 1.5 times 22.9 minus 18. Okay, work this one out. Sorry, I'm not doing it on the calculator on the screen. I don't know, I'm not quite sure why. I think it's just quicker to do it by hand. And we get 30.24. Sorry, 30.25. So Sundip's value for this one lies um, below the boundary. One definition says it's an outlier, one doesn't. The ultimate conclusion is that it's unclear. whether 30 is an outlier. If we want to say 31, then both would say it was an outlier, it would be okay. But this 
value we're not sure about. And remember, these are sort of human definitions for outliers. We have to come up with something to say it's a bit too far. But when you get around this boundary point, you, you know, you're a little bit less sure. And when, when the two of them disagree, which is what's happening here, you can be really unsure. Okay, on to the very last part. Layla claims that during term, each student spends on average 20 hours per week listening to music. Slack believes the true figure is higher. He uses his results to carry out a hypothesis test at the 5% level. So this is what we're claiming is true. And then Zach's got a result for the mean, actually, which was 21. And he wants to use that result to carry out a hypothesis test at the 5% level. Assume that the time spent to listen to music is normally distributed with standard deviation 4.2. Carry out the test. So first up, H0, we're going to say that the mean is in fact 20. H1 is that, well, Zach believes the true figure is higher. So this is a one-tailed test. We're saying that the mean is going to be greater than 20. Remember, Zach has found that the mean is greater than 20 in his case, but he had a sample. So how do we know we just didn't happen to pick everyone that listens to it a lot? That's where the hypothesis test comes in. We're going to assume H0 is true. Then I'm going to let X be the number of hours of music listened to by any given person and therefore x is going to follow a normal distribution with mean 20 and the variance is going to be 4.2 squared but here's the thing with these hypothesis tests we're not investigating like the whole population we're investigating the sample distribution the sample of um how many people was it I've already forgotten. I think it was it was 60 people. So don't forget what is actually happening here. We've got a normal distribution. We're kind of finding um I probably shouldn't move it up there. This is our normal distribution. We're finding 60 people somewhere along here. A lot of them are going to be around the middle because that's where the highest um the peak is basically when we're when we're doing our integration and finding the probability. There's going to be some outliers occasionally, but when you have these 60 people together and you're then finding the mean of those 60 people, it's definitely going to gather towards the central peak. And what happens when you do your sample distribution is that it, it kind of goes up like this. The mean of our sample distribution stays the same, but the variance decreases. In fact, we divide it by the number of people. I'm not going to prove that or anything. Um, you know, this is beyond the scope of the course, but this is the sampling distribution. I've tried to explain where that comes comes from. I remember when I did A-level math, like I just I just ended up assuming it's true. I've seen some really good demonstrations with Autograph and other software for, for why this is true. I've just tried to give a, a brief pictural representation right now. And actually my distribution is clearly like terrible because there's no way the area of both of these is going to be one. I just, I just, uh, we actually, I didn't start. Anyway, you got the idea, hopefully. So that is our sampling distribution. And now I'm going to work out the probability that when I take my sample of 60, the mean is greater or equal. Actually, it doesn't really matter if it's greater or equal to or greater than because we're doing normal distribution. But let's say greater or equal to 21.0. That's the amount that Zach actually found. Okay, so we've got everything in place. The distribution is going to be normal CD. The lower limit is 21. The upper limit, just make it something large, 10 to the power 9, or lots of 9s, however you want to do it. Sigma, okay, oh, I should have probably written that down. It's actually going to be 4.2 divided by the square root of 60. Sometimes that's known as a standard error. And the mean is going to be 20. 
we get 0 0.0325. Let me just say sigma is 4.2 over root 60. Okay, and this is less than 5%. So we're saying that there's only a 3% chance that we could have taken a sample of 60 people and got a mean that was greater or equal to 21. Okay, we're more likely to expect it to be lower, of course. And so because it's sufficiently low, it's below this threshold that we've decided, this significance level, then we're going to reject H0. There's, a, there's too small a chance of that happening with H0 actually being true. So we reject H0. There's sufficient evidence. At the 5% level. To say. The mean. Is more. Than 20. That doesn't mean it's 21. That was just in the sample. But we just. It just doesn't appear that it is 20. So that is our hypothesis test with normal. Thanks.